Hello everybody, this is uh, Paco3D.art and today we are doing the fourth lesson on introduction to Maya and essentially what we are doing in this lesson is learn how to do uh, movement, how to do rotation and how to do scale but also how to do these things with a few more options um, but uh, we're going to start first, let me change this to the screen so we're gonna learn um, how to do the placement with the keyboard and I am doing this out of uh, the experience that I've had a lot of students in the past that they're very comfortable using the iPads or the phones but they don't necessarily uh, they haven't used the computer as much so I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, where to place the hand and the keyboard and the mouse um, then we're going to talk about the shortcuts using Q, W, E, and R. Then we're going to do uh, movement, rotation, scale, how to hold down the J button for Joker to do uh, a little bit of movement with increments. And then what happens when you hold down some of the shortcuts with left click. So uh, moving on. So we are going to talk about uh, the keyboard layout. I could move the camera, maybe, with um, this here. It's going to be a little bit messy, but I'm going to move the keyboard, the, the hand here a little bit. So if you have this hand here, should always be in this hand at all times. And then if this stays, it's not going to stay. And then with the other hand, you should have the hand on the mouse. So you have one hand on the keyboard and one hand in the mouse. And the way that it should be is, wrong one. It should be like this, where you have the left hand always in this uh, side of the keyboard and then the right hand on the mouse. And the way that this should work is, um, if you pay attention at the fingers, why is everything happening here? If you look, uh, the fingers here that I painted really quickly with the colors, anything that is done with the index finger, you should have the one, the Q, the A, and the set uh, for zebra. Then with the second finger, you should have two, W, S, X, and it should be placed like this. And then of course the ring finger, this one here, should be those keys there. So always think about it this way, whenever you're doing um, anything, with Maya or Fiddy Graphics, it's very shortcut heavy, and you need to make sure that um, you always got that hand ready on that keyboard while you use the other hand to do the painting and the drawing, the sketches, or using the mouse, so you can be as productive as you can. Because I've seen a lot of learners say, click the buttons with one key, and they go like this and like that, and like, no, you, you have to be, uh, quite proactive, yeah. So now that we've got a bit of a figure out where cool where we place our hand, where we press our keyboard, always in that sense, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the four keys. Um, you know, to get the elephant out of the room. So we're essentially going to do everything with Q of Queensland, W, E, and R. So those are the main four keys that we are going to be using uh, for this project. So we go in here really quickly. Now, a lot of you will be switching like this with a mouse. You'll be, say you're selecting this object, you'll be moving it and then you go, cool, now I'm gonna rotate it and now I'm gonna scale it and you're gonna be doing this a lot. I do not want you to do that. Cuts. What we're going to do instead is we're going to do Q, W, E, W, E, R. So I want you to get the hang of doing that over and over again, back and forward. So then you never ever click on those buttons, all right? Whenever we are switching between these tools. So the first one we're going to talk about, so we got uh, Q is always to do the selection, which we covered in the earlier video, but then if you press W, this is the move uh, command. And the way that it works is, so make sure that we go on world. Um, you're gonna have this little gadget here. 
and it looks like a small gizmo. So you can make it smaller by pressing minus or make it bigger by pressing plus on the keyboard. So let's make it pretty big. And you have essentially six little things that you can interact with. So if you select on this, it's going to move it up or down. And then this one is going to be a forward or backwards. And then this one is going to be sideways. Yeah, it's as simple as that. However, what is really cool about these little uh, boxes here, right, is that it will move on that plane. So this one here, it will move along the, the Y plane. So if you click on that, it will move the object on that plane. However, if you do this one, this is along the X plane. So that's going to move it like this. However, if you click on this, it's going to move on that plane. Now, you might have noticed um, whenever I am selecting any of this, and this is going to remove the UI by uh, holding down Control and Spacebar, just so we can have a bit of space. You might have noticed that the last selection that you make, it turns yellow. And what's very good about that is that once you hold down yellow, you don't necessarily need to click on this in order to move it. You can hold down middle button and it will do the same thing. So if for whatever reason you click on an object, say that you click on an object here, but then you can't see it for whatever reason or the, the viewport, the, sorry, the gizmos is very tiny or you cannot see it, then you can hold down the middle mouse button and you can move it like that as well. Very easily. What is really good um, about this is that you can also move this with increments. And in order to adjust uh, these increments, you can always change a lot of the movement uh, parameters if you double click on this button here, which is essentially, it's essentially you are opening uh, the command panel on how you can change some of the settings. So you can change the world orientation to world, for example, but you can also have this uh, with snapping. So this is the increments. So you can have the increments to a relative or absolute to one units. And now, now that that's on, essentially this is what's happening. It is moving on those increments, right? So it's like snapping. You see how there's a little bit of a snap. But if I change that to now to five units, it will snap to five units. So it's almost like it teleports five units. But if I turn this off now and I hold down J for Joker, it will do the same thing. Like it will snap every five units. You will see how it's going between the grid and then on the grid like that. And that's because it's snapping to that. It doesn't work on those. It only works on this, unfortunately. So if you hold down J, you see how it's snapping. It's changing that. Whenever I hold down J for Joker, and then now it's snapping like that. So that can be quite useful, especially if you're doing things like uh, with modularity. Okay. Now we're going to move uh, with uh, rotation. So by the way, um, now it's a good time to pause if you want to play with the movement. Uh, if you want to move things around a little bit, but we're going to do now a little bit of uh, rotation. So when it comes to rotation, we're going to press down the E for elephant, and this is for rotation. And rotation, the gizmos, is a little bit uh, more different. So you get um, three little rings. So let's zoom in that. Give me a second. Okay, so we're going to zoom that a little bit. So this is where you get essentially four rings. So you get one here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but this is one is the X axis for the ring. But then you have the blue one that's going across this way. So this is essentially you rotating on the set axis. Remember the colors. This one here is yellow at the moment, but it's uh, actually green. And this axis here, this is you're rotating in the Y axis. However, if you are rotating this one around it, this one is usually yellow, this one here. And if you rotate on that axis, you are rotating 
on however you are parallel to the viewport. So it's almost like it's rotating this way with the camera. And it will always look like it's looking towards you. Uh, the thing is, if you do rotate anywhere, if you touch anywhere on the orb, but it's not on those rings, it's like here, it's gonna rotate on all of them. However, I would never use those if you are doing anything with animation because it can get a little bit distorted with the animation and then animating while using that, it might get confused with axis it has to rotate. So I would avoid that if you can. So let's give it a bit of a try. So now if I go like this, it will highlight that and that's rotating now on this axis. And you'll see like a little, um, it's almost like a circumference, uh, two radio uh, lines that's going around the circle. And the, the further you go out of the screen, the more accuracy is got. You see how it's like super, super accurate now, but then the closer you get to the ring, it will go very crazy. You see, it will go very fast. And sometimes this is why some people like to make this uh, very big because then the more accuracy you have whenever you're rotating that, because you have to move a lot more screen space when you're rotating around. Yeah. But sometimes if you tap in once and then you hold down the space bar, it will do that as well, you see. So if you want to have a bit more accuracy, you click it on once and then you hold down uh, the middle button and that will rotate it as well that way. So that's one axis. And then you can do it like that, or you can just click once and middle mouse, and then that will do it like that if you want to have a little bit more of accuracy. Yeah. Like I said, if you click on the orb here, it's going to go in all directions, but you see how it can get a little bit funky and it can just get a little bit disjointed. And I will show you that if we look very, very quickly. And the the channel box here. I don't know why that's there. Let's put that there for a second. The channel box. Um, you will see here in the rotation, this is what's happening there. So if I go like that, you see how it's going really crazy with all the three numbers. And if you do it anything with animation, look at the rotate set at the moment. It's going uh, minus 600, right? So it, 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 got, it gets a bit funky. So I don't recommend using that, to be honest. I would recommend doing it like this, like that, and then like that, and then like that. And now it's gonna be a little bit less funky or a little bit less confusing. Okay, by the way, I'm doing undo, so this is control set, and that's very universal. Oh, I've got a lot of stuff there, so I'm just gonna delete the history, which uh, I will explain as well in a future class. Okay, and that is rotation. All right, have a bit of a play. And like I said, this is uh, the outer ring. I'm gonna make that a bit smaller. This is for the camera base, and this is camera base rotation. But if you can see the free axis X, Y, and Z, it is moving all of those three as well. But this is now rotating based on the camera. So if I move around here a little bit, and I do that, now it's gonna move on that camera direction, you see. Like that, you see that's moving that way as well. Okay. Uh, like I said earlier, with the snapping, with the rotation, if you want to rotate this in incrementals, if you hold down J, and by the way, I opened that again by double clicking this, and we'll show you this. If you hold down J, you will see here, you have the snap with absolute at 15 degrees. So you can also uh, change that as well. So now if I rotate this, it's gonna do freestyle, but if I'll hold down J, it's gonna snap at every 15 degrees, you see? And this is very useful, especially if you want to be exactly 95 degrees this way, 95 degrees, then it's going to be flat. So if you want to like be very exact, uh, that's very handy. But whenever it comes to objects like this um, and you need to scale them, you press down the R button and you, it's very similar to the move uh, gizmos where you have the arrows. Instead of here, you have these little boxes and this is for transform. So you can transform it this way. So scaling this direction or it is scaling at this direction or this one. 
But if you want to scale both at the same time, you can use this gizmos here. And now that's going to scale at this direction. Like that. Or it's going to scale at that direction. So it's scaling both at the same time. Or this one here at the same time. However, uh, pay attention that if you are scaling things that are in front of you or side of you, so let's tap here once and then tap here once again. And let's say that you want to scale things uh, instead of this way, you want to scale them so it's like, it might be a bit easier to see if we zoom here. Say that you are in this viewport here. So say that you want to scale it this way, like that. But you are in this view for some reason and you cannot see that. You can hold down this button here and hold down control and it will do the same thing you see. And this is something that not a lot of people know, but you can do it this way as well. You hold down control here and it will scale it that way as well. So that's another nice thing that not a lot of people necessarily know about that. And the same work way works where if you tap here once and then you use the middle mouse button, it will do the same thing. Like it will scale with a little bit more sensitivity with that area alone. And it works as well with scale. So if I go scale and I hold down J again, it's gonna do increments of 1% or 100%. You see how it's, uh, it shows one, two, three, four, with a scale Y. Scale Y, four, three, two, one. So it is essentially scaling at absolute of one, which is 100%. Okay. All right, so we got this uh, little box here with all these colors and uh, the exercise here is to move and feel free to press control space to get a bit more space in the user interface and I'm going to start with this purple one here so I'm going to select it and I'm going to move it like that and in the next exercise I'm going to show you about snapping and we're going to do that with the next exercise. So we're going to go move it like that, move that here. And if you need a little bit of accuracy, you can do this with the full movement. Press F, F, F. So you can see a little bit better what you're doing there. So that's perfectly doable. In this window here, now I can move it like that. So I can be nice and accurate. Okay, I think that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but yeah, feel free to stop this. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. And I think that's enough. You see, that's the easy one. Okay, I'm going to do the next one, color. So I'm going to do this blue one here. I'm going to move this here. And then I'm going to press F here. I can see how it is a little bit uh, rotated this way. So I'm just going to rotate it like that to make sure that is and tap one so we can see it very clearly. Move it here. I'm going to scale it a bit more. Like that. I think you get the, the just as it is. So, um, yeah, and then I'm going to scale it this way. I'm going to show you another good tip with this one. So you see how now this is world uh, direction. So say that you want to move upwards this way. So I'm going to show you the next uh, technique. So the next technique is um, if you hold down W and then you hold down left click, it's going to show you some parameters. So we're going to move this object uh, object wise. So it's going to stay the pivot point on how it was originally. And now you can move it like this. Very easily. Um, I'm gonna tap once to get it out of here. And now I can see here it needs to go a little bit more inwards. So it fits in there. And this one here is gonna be very hard to see how squashed that's meant to be. So you can always go um, on top of the viewport in here. There is a button that enables you to see things with X-ray. And sometimes that's gonna be a little bit easier, especially if you press on this button here to see on the wireframes. 
and that's what might be a little bit easier to see how deep that's meant to go. So I'm gonna do maybe something like that. It's kind of hard to see, to be honest. That's why I find that. I think uh, that will be good enough for now. That's why I find that. I'm gonna take that off. I'll explain a little bit more. And that's uh, the next one. So I'm gonna do this ball here. Move it this way. And then here it's very hard to see what I'm doing. So this is the time where I might change this so I can look at this around here. And you can see how working in orthographic can be uh, useful sometimes because what happens here, unless you've got like uh, 3D virtual reality glasses, it's really hard to understand the perception on how things are. So having extra information on how things are connected is a little bit better. So here, I rotate it a little bit like here, like that, like this way, scale this way, all right. Okay, I think it doesn't have to be perfect as long as like you kind of have those shapes inside of it. Great sound effect. All right, so do the rest of the objects. And then um, I think I'm going to use uh, this exercise here with a little bit of snapping next. And with this object too, I'm gonna do a little bit of snapping with a pivot point. So only do this one here, put the objects together. Uh, but before you do that, I'm just gonna go through uh, very quickly on the summary for this class and then give you a break. So, We've got uh, how you place the hands on the keyboard, how to do rotation, how to do uh, movement, rotation, scale, J for incremental uh, manipulation, uh, but also this first exercise. In the next lesson, we're going to be covering on different ways on how to create primitives within Maya. So this is, whenever you think about a primitive, it is a start point to do 3D modeling, so it could be anything from a cube or a cylinder or a sphere, but also on how to change some of the parameters within these primitives, but also on how to change some of the colors so we can start already coming up with some of the block outs. Um, this is usually the beginning of uh, doing any 3D modeling. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing for the next lesson. Thanks for watching this video. And remember to uh, subscribe. Uh, the more subscriptions that I get with this video, uh, the more chances that other people will see it as well. Remember to like it. And if you've got a friend uh, that wants to learn Maya, uh, remember to share this video as well. And feel free to make a comment about uh, how I can make uh, any better tutorials. Or if you've got any questions, I'll be more than happy to help you out. I'll see you soon.